Hello, this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome to another Indie Game Friday, where each week I take a look at a different independent role-playing game. This week we're going to take a look at a game that's at least as much of an adventure game as an RPG, and yet unique enough that it bears mentioning. Developed and published by Amazoo Media, Light Apprentice saw a full release on Steam on November 10th, 2017, and is available on Steam but also on the App Store and Google Play as of this recording. At least, Volume 1 is out now, and I'll touch on that a bit later. I've covered a few gamebook-style or gamebook-inspired RPGs in the past, and I've mentioned that I enjoy the genre. This is relevant because Light Apprentice seeks to be a gamebook, but in comic book format. Where a literary gamebook would have long scrolls of text, Light Apprentice connects decision points and adventure areas with comic book style panels instead, some of which are animated either lightly or heavily. Like some of the better gamebook inspired games, it includes an RPG light system of inventory and skills. The combat and exploration systems, while still simplistic, are a step more robust than most of the gamebook inspired games I've actually played. As a comic book based game, Light Apprentice is divided into volumes and then those volumes are further subdivided into chapters. As of when I was writing this review, only Volume 1 was available, although it does offer a fair amount of gameplay between the various chapters it includes. In terms of story, it starts with a lone explorer going into the depths of some forgotten facility, only to uncover an individual who's been in stasis for centuries. They then team up to fight their way out of the facility to the surface, where a backstory of war and desolation is revealed to our hero out of time. It's actually pretty typical JRPG slash comic book style stuff up to that point, but I don't want to get too much into the details since a game book kind of relies on the story itself as a main selling point, and any spoiling of that is going to limit your enjoyment. So let's take a look at the gameplay itself. As I've mentioned, there's a number of comic book style cutscenes that govern the bulk of the story revelations. These are relatively fluid, requiring you to click on the screen to advance to the next panel or the next text bubble. The majority of these panels are done in a hand-drawn style, while some of the panels are lightly animated and some others use a cel-shaded engine that powers the exploration and combat modes. This mix actually kind of works, allowing for the action to be revealed bit by bit. Despite not being a huge comic devotee myself, I really liked this presentation. Occasionally these cutscenes will branch out into choices, which can affect the story in at least minor ways, similar to a visual novel. This leaves the exploration and the combat modes. Both use a fixed point of view, 3D cell shaded representation with minor environmental and enemy animations. Usually the main characters themselves are relatively static. That is, while they are lightly animated, they don't usually seem to move around the screen. Instead, you are left to a point-and-click style interface, either to pick up or interact with objects, to find out more information through cutscenes, or to engage in combat. As a result, a lot of the puzzles and such are typical of what you'd see in a point-and-click adventure, in that you have to browse around a static scene, seeing what you can pick up or interact with, what you can not, and many times you won't know until you actually click on an item. From what I've experienced during my playtime, however, most of the puzzles were relatively linear, with rather clear choices, which did help a bit with a monotony which can otherwise arise with such gameplay. Further, while exploring, moving from scene to scene, and progressing the story, I found that some places didn't become interactive until you first interact with something else further down the line, thus preventing short-circuiting many puzzles and missing out on potential story scenes. Combat, on the other hand, is turn-based. Characters have a few attributes, which revolve around their speed, physical power, and skill power, and can perform one of a few activities during combat. They may attack, defend, use a potion, or use a skill. Using a potion or using some utility skills doesn't really end a character's turn, while attacking, defending, or using a skill that by its nature is an attack or a defense does. Once actions have been assigned, combat proceeds with creatures and characters acting according to their initiative, which I believe is affected by their speed. 
There is a handy indication of who most monsters are targeting in that they will turn and look at the person that they're going after. This can help you when determining whether to have that character block or use some other skill. Monsters have hit points and something called endurance, while characters have hit points in a shared pool termed spirit points. When a monster attacks, if a character is defending, they'll get a chance to block, and if the block succeeds, the monster loses an endurance point. Once they are out of endurance points, they are stunned for three rounds. By stunning all combatants at once, you can forgive them and end the combat in a peaceful manner. There's also usually options during cutscenes that allow for combat to be avoided, thus enabling a pacifist-style run which may affect the story. If you don't care for that sort of non-violent confrontation resolution, combat itself does offer a fair number of options. Basic attacks may be targeted against an enemy, while skills require varying numbers of spirit points to use. As stated, spirit points are shared between characters, and you gain one every time a character uses a basic attack or a basic defense. Anytime you attack, block, or use a skill, the success or failure, or even the scale of success or failure, is determined by a minigame. And it's often different minigames for different types of skills, although some of them have certain similarities. Many of these are reflex-based, and the time limit offered on these various minigames is based on the character's speed versus that of their target. Exceptionally fast enemies versus the triggering character speed will result in very short windows of time during these minigames, while very fast characters versus very slow enemies will result in longer ones. Normally, I really, really don't like these sorts of Twitch-based minigames in an RPG, but in this case, at least, they were forgiving and easy enough that I didn't have any problems with them. All in all, the combat system is introduced in phases over the first chapter and is surprisingly easy to get into. At least it was for me. There is a character advancement system in that after each combat you get experience, and if you get enough, you level up. This doesn't seem to do much more than grant additional hit points and increase damage and effectiveness. Skills seem to be acquired as a result of storyline events rather than just spending points to unlock things. There's also some inventory management. You can find various items that are pretty generic seeming at first that fit into just some basic inventory slots on each character. You also have to select from your various potions and equip them between fights to one of three slots, although potion slots seem to be shared amongst all characters. In terms of graphics, the art is actually pretty nice, with the hand-drawn scenes really hammering home the comic book feel of the game, and the cell-shaded rendering blending in rather well. The music is actually pretty good. There's an OST available as a DLC, and I really actually kind of give the game points for that. The interface is kind of mobile gaming. Okay, the interface screams mobile game, and it does seem available to, on the Google Play and App Stores. Uh, normally, I really don't like the mobile UIs on a desktop version of a game, but for a game this basic and with its focus on feeling like a game book, I really don't see a huge issue with it. So this is an odd one in terms of the overall recommendation. I'm not a big comic book person, so the aesthetics should be lost on me. I am not a huge JRPG fan, and many of the design decisions in this game seem JRPG inspired. It's very RPG light. It's a mobile game on desktop, which I don't usually like. It uses Twitch-based mechanics, which I've also stated I don't like in my RPGs. I should really dislike this game, but I don't. The elements, as much as I'm not a fan of them individually, mesh very well for this particular title, enough for me to say that I can see the potential here even if individually I would not like the components. I genuinely enjoyed my time with it. There are some bugs with the game, as many of the reviews on the storefront have pointed out, but I personally only encountered a couple of them, and none of them were particularly game-breaking or worrying. Further, the dev team seems to do well with fixing them based on community feedback, which is always a plus. I don't know if I can wholeheartedly recommend this game based on the content available at the current price point. I would like to see how the next volumes roll out, because there are supposedly going to be three of them. However, if you do enjoy game books, 
or if you enjoy comic books, or if you just enjoy any of the slew of things that I just listed that I'm not a huge fan of, your mileage on this title will probably be a bit better than mine. It's a curious little hybrid of different styles that I, I actually do hope works out, because I'd love to see other games similar to this approach done in the future. I'm going to leave this one squarely in the recommended if you like this specific genre pile, even with the full knowledge that the specific genre that it belongs to is still pretty undefined. And I'm going to leave it at that. This has been the RPG Crawler with Indie Game Friday, Light Apprentice. If you like what you've seen, remember to leave a like, comment if you've got any feedback, and subscribe for more RPG content, both tabletop and computer. If you're feeling particularly generous, I do have a Patreon that helps to support this channel with new equipment and new things for me to review. It's available at patreon.com slash rpgcrawler. Until next time, take care and goodbye.